Thanks for joining us, Julie. Sure, my pleasure. Now, I think a lot of people, although they don't know you did it, would, would be aware that of the film that Will Ferrell did doing an imitation of George Bush mm. down at the, the, uh, the at ranch. The ranch, yeah. So, why don't we start there and just talk about why you, you uh, did that film and what message you were trying to deliver and for whom. Well, there were several reasons why we did this short. Um, it was it was interesting the timing of it because it was a bit the dark ages. It was before YouTube and before right. podcasting, and so the web itself was sort of the only tool that you could use to reach people in, in terms of the internet at the time. So um, the the assignment that I sort of gave myself was I was working for an organization called America Coming Together, which was a group to to aggressively register Democratic voters in what was considered to be the 17 battleground states right. in the 2004 election. And it was my feeling that there was a way, perhaps, to connect media to a ground operation where you could, you know, raise awareness on the ground for this particular group to get volunteers to go to, to, to walk precincts, to make phone calls, to sign up and have a, a, a hand in turning their state uh, blue. Right. So nobody knew whether there was a correlation at that time right. between a piece of media and a ground operation. And it turned out that in the first week that the piece went up on the web, there was something like two and a half million hits in the first three or four days. And then 33,000 people volunteering on the ground for the group that was sponsoring this piece. So it was the beginning of sort of an understanding, maybe at least for me, of the powerful connections that you can make. And we chose to do it in that particular way with comedy because there's such a low voter turnout in our country right now and there's such a need for people to be motivated to the polls that we have to reach people culturally. Politically is not the answer. Right. And so all the political media that we do is really is really political media but it's disguised as cultural outreach. Okay, okay so let's just jump forward in time now. You've got another election coming up. Mm. Um, so what are you doing around the upcoming election? Well in 2004 we also did a campaign with Planned Parenthood and a group called Women's Voices, Women's Vote. So we did a piece for them in 2004 and we did another campaign for them in 2006 and in both of those election periods we moved, um, you know, collectively two million votes. And that was the uh, first time I've had sex. No, first time I voted. Exactly. Yeah. So that was the 2006 right. campaign. And so we're working again with Women's Voices, Women's Vote in 2007 and in 2008 to build first a very robust um, registration media campaign and then for 2008 we're going to build a, a, a get out the vote campaign. Um, in addition to the other sort of, we're going to be doing some work with the Democratic National Convention, um, bringing new media to the conversation, you know, taking advantage of all the channels that people are living on now and right. trying to do a kind of Rashomon for people so that you can really bring people into the convention. Right. And you know what sh kind of shape that's going to take yet? Have you scripted anything <coughs> out yet or who have you got as players in it? We've just started scripting. Um, we have a kind of big idea that we're sort of trying to see if we can make it work. Um, we're going to shoot it in, a in the next few weeks and roll it out in early November. So. This is like super secret or can you tell us about it a bit? Um, well, I think, no, it's not super secret. I think the idea that we're working with this time is, is real women talking about the issues that matter to them um, in a kind of, without sounding Pollyanna, in, a, in an attempt to really empower women around the country, single women, to understand their collective power. Okay. So we'll still use celebrities, but the celebrities will be almost hosting the real stories of these okay. women. So there'll be a series of 30-second pieces, but then there'll be longer stories that will be on the website, that will be blogged about, that we know we're going to put all the channels to work to move this campaign. So you've spent a lot of time over the last several years taking some pretty complicated political issues and turning them into something that has some entertainment value and some cultural resonance and stuff. What have you learned about that process that you think you could pass on? 
Well, I mean, the thing that's the most fun for me is that I like to read all the research and all the, you know, the wonky stuff. Right. And then I like to try to figure out how to break it down into a popular culture message. And I, I would urge all organizations and all, you know, nonprofits as well as political campaigns to think that way culturally. Because I think that's what moves people. When right. you reach them where they are, they feel respected, they, they are interested in finding out more of the hard information because the information isn't entertaining right. so it's 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 kind of beating your head against the wall to think you can turn something entertaining into something interest I mean something informative into something entertaining unless you really come at it from a cultural perspective so that would be you know my my advice would be for people to try to find cultural touchstones when talking about complicated things you know, actually it reminds me of how um, the AIDS message got out in the late 80s and stuff where instead of people saying you've got to come to the hospital to get the information that, that workers were actually going into the gay bars and, and bathhouses and stuff and delivering the message where people were in the culture that they were used to. Well there's that way and there's also I would argue you know when Magic Johnson came out publicly right. to say that he was HIV positive that one moment um, breaks down a lot of barriers. It was bold of him in some way mm -hmm. because he was probably the first sort of major national or international athlete ever to do it. But but it became a cultural conversation because somebody like him was willing to take responsibility for his being HIV positive and to try to be a, a tool for education. So in a way that spoke volumes that then made it easier for activists and people like that to either go into bars and go to cultural places but also to start talking about the information differently because he he was willing to be a kind of lightning rod. Right. Now I think a lot of, of people that try to deliver political messages would be sort of depressed with the message that you're just, you're, you're carrying forward that that is that you have to use cultural references that you have to use celebrities to get across complicated issues right well, I don't think it's always celebrities. I mean, you know, this is one of the reasons why we're going to be using a lot of real women, for right. example, in this particular campaign, because there's a there's a need now, in at least in terms of the 2008 election in the United States, for authenticity. Right. And the use of celebrity is a complicated animal, and many celebrities can be used in an authentic way, but many of them can't. But celebrities and and cultural messaging is 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 what people respond to, and you can say that it's conditioning from being bombarded um, by popular culture and we can be critical of the fact that news has become entertainment and that there's this blurring of the lines and that there's not enough investigative journalism and all of that's true but there still is the need to recognize what's right in front of us and 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 the tools we have to work with and not be snobby about the fact that if if you entice someone, they will then maybe go learn the more difficult information and become more politically aware. And however you get people to the table, mm -hmm. you should, you know, as long as it's not immoral or unethical, you should you should pursue it, I think. Good. Well, thank you for pursuing it. And I look forward to seeing the, uh, the commercials and those short films you're going to be coming out with uh, in the near future. Thank so you so much. Us. My okay. pleasure. Okay.